to today, Mark will be giving a second lecture on introduction of to stable homology theory. All righty, thanks, Stefan. So let's just remember what happened in lecture one, and then we'll see how far we get in the second and final lecture. So recall. So in so I had sort of three perspectives that I was touting for the stable homotopy category. So the stable homotopy category. Which was going to be, eventually, it will be the homotopy category of spectra. OK? So the first of these. The first of these was where we take the homotopy category of topological spaces, which I want to remind you is the category of topological spaces where we invert weak homotopy equivalents. We consider the homotopy category of pointed topological spaces, and we want to invert suspension. And the second perspective that I gave was as the category of cohomology theories. generalized cohomology theories. And, uh, and then the third one that I haven't really gotten to yet is a category of infinite loop spaces. So last time I talked about these two perspectives, and so let's just remember how they work. So for perspective one, we discovered a good idea was to, um, I mean, what we wanted to do, whatever this thing was, there is going to be a map from the homotopy category of, a functor from the homotopy category of topological spaces to this homotopy category of spectra, whatever it ends up being. And, uh, and given, a, given a, a pointed topological space, we're going to associate to it a, you know, an object here, and uh, because we're just localizing, we're inverting some endo functor. And uh, we discovered that, 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 that um, in order to properly make objects here, what we needed to do is we needed to consider uh, sequences. So, so our first naive guess was to simply, do we formally introduce objects like this? Yes, we want to do that, but we need more elaborate objects. And the more elaborate objects we need is we need to be able to not just desuspend the whole thing, but we need to be able to desuspend parts of the thing and then be able to desuspend further larger parts as we add the larger parts. And so to implement that, we introduce the idea of, um, we introduce the idea of a CW spectrum, which was a sequence of pointed CW complexes, Ki together with uh, inclusions of CW complexes. And then the idea was, was that the spectrum, uh, the spectrum that was represented by this would be, would, be the, uh, would be like the union of the, of the desuspensions of, the, uh, of, of, of these guys. OK, so that was, our, that was our first perspective. I called this map sigma i. And then, and then when we talked about generalized cohomology theories, these generalized cohomology theories were functors from, uh, say, the uh, category of pointed topological spaces to graded abelian groups satisfying some axioms. And, uh, we discovered that these functors were representable so that uh, the, the, uh, e, uh, the E nth cohomology of X, E n reduced cohomology of X, was naturally isomorphic to the homotopy classes of maps from X into some pointed space, E i. But then we had a suspension isomorphism on our cohomology. Uh, 
i is of course equal to n. Thank you. And then, and then we had a suspension isomorphism that says that en cohomology of x is supposed to be isomorphic to the en plus first cohomology of suspension x. And this led us to a equivalence, which I'll call sigma i twiddle, that goes from e i to loops e i plus 1. And this is the homotopy equivalence, right? Yes. A, uh, well, a weak, a weak homotopy equivalence. OK, great. So um, now I want to pause for a moment and uh, just say that I, I just want to, so, so now I, I just want to give you an example of this. So an example of this, if we take E to be regular cohomology, Then, uh, well, then, then we know that the, uh, so then this is supposed to be then, then, the, um, then we know that the regular cohomology of a sphere, sorry, these are pointed homotopy classes of maps. I want to emphasize that. So if I take the, if I take the, the cohomology of a sphere, we know the reduced cohomology of the sphere, that will be A of i equals n and 0 otherwise. But we also know that that should be homotopy pointed homotopy classes of maps from Sn into the, uh, the ith space of the representing spectrum. We'll call the representing spectrum HA. And so what this tells us is that the, is that the i space of the representing spectrum, um, remember we call these things omega spectra. So the i space of the omega spectrum representing HA has the property that, well, just remember what is this? This is nothing but pi n of HAI. So it's a space that has the property that it only has one non-trivial homotopy group in one degree. And so its homotopy type is uniquely determined. So H A I is an Eilenberg McLean space. Okay. And one thing we know about Eilenberg McLean spaces is that if you loop an Eilenberg McLean space, it's equivalent to the Eilenberg McLean space one dimension lower. And so that equivalence is the map that makes this thing into an omega spectrum. We call this omega spectrum the eilenberg mclean spectrum. Associated to A. Um, right. OK, so now let's talk about infinite loop spaces. So the infinite loop space perspective. So an infinite loops. So what is a loop space? So a loop space is a space x which is equivalent to loops on some other pointed space, so a pointed space. Um, and a weak homotopy equivalence uh, to, say, loops on y. Okay? Um, these things arise a lot. For example, if x equals g, a topological group, then I, uh, then G is equal to loops of BG. And so in particular, it is a loop space.
you're a double loop space if you can be written as double loops of something, etc., etc. Okay? And so an infinite loop space means that you can, that you're equivalent to loops n of something, better give it a name, for arbitrary n. But now here's where things get a little confusing. Uh, being a loop space is not a property, it's a structure. The structure is the choice of this equivalence and the choice of the de-looping. Okay? And so if I'm saying I'm an, I'm an n-fold loop space or if I'm, if I'm saying I'm an infinite loop space, I have to have a choice of a bunch of these structures, but for every n, they should be compatible. Okay? So it's best to define an infinite loop space x to be like a sequence of spaces y together with equivalences y is equivalent to loops yn plus 1 and then x is now equivalent to so and x will be our y0 and y0 is equivalent to loops of y1 and it's equivalent to loops 2 of y2 by means of taking loops to the equi uh, loops of the equivalence from y to loops of y2, you know, y1 to loops of y2, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's a kind of consistent way of making it an infinite loop space. Okay? Where does this arise in nature? Well, I've already seen that this arises in nature in the context of eilenberg mclean spaces. In fact, any omega spectrum is giving us this structure of an infinite loop space. So any cohomology theory is handing us an infinite loop space as part of its, represent, as its representing object. Okay? You could say infinite loop space is really nothing more than just another name for this omega spectrum thing. There is another example I can give you. Is there, is there literally no so I'm about to get there, but um, so, so almost, with one subtle caveat. So let me just give one example. So here's an example, just kind of fun. Say that A is a topological abelian group. Okay? If A is a topological abelian group, then we can, of course, take BA. Okay? Now, abelian groups have a very special property. The group structure map is itself a homomorphism. That is not true for general groups. Because this is a homomorphism, you get an induced map of classifying spaces. And as long as your model for B is sufficiently functorial, then, uh, then this is BA cross BA. And so then you've suddenly given BA the structure of an abelian group, which means you can then take BBA. And you can keep going. So the sequence BIA, where you take BBBBB a bunch of times, forms an infinite loop space. OK, now I want to highlight something about BG and more. Oh, you know, let me just say one thing. A could be given the discrete topology. And then if A is given the discrete topology, then this is nothing more than KAI. Okay? So this is sort of an elaboration on the eilenberg mclean construction. Okay? Now, um, uh, the thing, though, that I want to point out is, is that normally when we talk about BG, now I will say that you know, BG depended on a choice of structure, namely the group structure on G, right? If I gave different group structures in the same topological space, I would have potentially different classifying spaces. Okay, so there is that, right? But once you fix that group structure, it's like you fix the space BG, but we still don't, you know, if you think about BG as a space where loops of it gives you back G, there's another thing that, that, we, that we might have to worry about. Can different spaces have equivalent loop spaces? Okay? Well, um, gosh. Uh, if you have, if, if, if different spaces, you know, 
I guess what I want to say is, is what, how could we change this BG such that we have an equivalent loop space? Well, BG is the property that it's connected, OK? But say I could have taken BG disjoint, you know, BG wed, you know, BG disjoint union something else, and then I would have some pi zero. Okay, and so and so BG BG is distinguished by the fact that it's connected, and uh, and more generally, more generally over here, I could have chosen other spaces that had maybe I could choose a space that had some, you know, like for B two, B two A. The normal model for B2A will be simply connected. But I could have, I could have chosen a variant where this, is the, you know, where, where this is the universal cover, you know, something that had some pi 1 or something that had some pi 1 and some pi 0. Okay? And loops of those, double loops of those would be the same because double loops eradicates pi 0 and pi 1. More generally, i-fold loops will eradicate pi 0, pi 1 through pi i minus 1. So there is ambiguity in the choice I choose for de-looping based on the lower homotopy groups. Okay? And this is the one distinction that I want to make. Usually when people talk about infinite loop spaces, they might add the additional little criterion that yn is n minus 1 connected. That is, its bottom homotopy group is in dimension n. Okay? So, so there is that. Okay? So maybe the category of infinite loop spaces can be regarded as a kind of subcategory of the category of omega spectra um, that, that only consists of omega spectra having this property. Does that pin down the delooping? Like if you did not consider n there? Yes, okay. it does. So, in so much as you, know, you still have to have the equivalence, right. and you want to say the equivalence is part of the structure. Right. I mean, I will say this is the right thing to do. So the category of infinite loop spaces is a certain subcategory of the homotopy category of spectra. Okay, um, let me now go on to. Oh, right. So now I want to give you another interesting thing to do. So I want to give you an elaboration. The eilenberg maclean construction. So, so here's what I want to do. I want to take a chain, let's say that C is a chain complex of abelian groups. OK? Um, Maybe not, let me call it A star. Okay, so a chain, the differential goes down. It's a chain complex, okay? Then what I can do is I can consider the following thing. I can consider uh, the uh, 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 hom from the, say, the singular chains on X into A star. And this is a Z-graded chain complex. There's a standard procedure in homological algebra that will endow the HOMs between chain complexes with the structure of a chain complex. Here, it, in, this also has to have a grading, so maybe I'll put that over here. So, so the, the, the i-th graded things are things that shift degrees by i. And then you have a differential between these things. Okay? So this thing gets the structure of a chain complex. Okay? Great. And then, um, and then I can consider the, uh, I can consider the, uh, the well, uh, I'm, gonna, if you, I'm going to write, uh, uh, say, h minus n of this. Okay, I'm setting it up so that everything's a chain complex. Okay? If a were just concentrated in one degree, this would simply be an abelian group. And then you might say, whoa, 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 that thing homming out of a chain complex should give you a cochain complex. But it's a chain complex if you think it is being graded in negative degrees. And then the cohomology of the cochain complex would be the minus 
homology of that resulting chain complex. Okay? So I will define this. This will be defined to be Hn of x with, or H cohomology of x with coefficients in the chain complex A. Okay? And what you will find is that this is a cohomology theory. Okay? So this is a cohomology theory. And that implies that it's represented by a spectrum, an omega spectrum. H A, so I mean, it should be regarded like that. <laughs> so uh, that represents this cohomology theory. Moreover, if you have a quasi isomorphism between chain complexes, that is, a map between chain complexes that, introduces, that, that induces an isomorphism in homology, you will get isomorphic cohomology theories. As a result, you get a, so the derived category of Z is the category of chain complexes where you invert quasi-isomorphisms. And uh, you get a map from the derived category of, of Z to a functor from the derived category of Z to the, this, you know, this stable homotopy category, this homotopy category of omega spectra. Okay? It's a map. Okay? So every element of the derived category. So what I'm, what I'm moving to is I want us to think about this as itself as a kind of derived category. Okay, so this is this is this is a kind of of derived category. Okay, and to make it such, I'm going to now produce a bunch of constructions in the homotopy category of spectra that mirror constructions that you perform in the derived category of some ring. So now, let me give a proper definition of the homotopy category of spectra that stops dealing with these omega spectra and these, uh, these, uh, uh, these, these uh, uh, CW spectra. So definition, uh, the category of spectra Called the category SP of spectra uh, has objects, sequences of spaces just arbitrary pointed topological spaces and uh, maps. between the spaces from the suspension of one to the next. So that's part of the objects, right? Like the that's part of the objects. Circle. Sorry. As objects, I see the issue. Thank you. These are the objects. This is a spectrum. These are spec this is a spectrum. And then a map of spectra. And maps uh, that are sequences of maps uh, such that uh, maps of pointed topological spaces such that the following diagram commutes. A 
That's all I did. Or, in the other definition, I took away the fact that the adjoints are weak homotopy equivalences. So these are just maps with no conditions. The homotopy groups, so uh, if E equals EI is a spectrum, we'll define the homotopy groups. Pi n of E is defined to be the colimit over I of pi n plus I of EI. And here, n is allowed to be in z. So if n is negative, choose i to be large enough so that this makes sense, because we don't know what negative homotopy groups of spaces are. Just to make sure, the commutativity of this diagram is on the nose, right? On the nose. Okay. On the nose. OK. Um, so then a map of spectra. A map of spectra is a, a stable equivalence say a map of spectra f from e to e prime is a stable equivalence if the induced map going from pi star e to pi star e prime is an isomorphism. Definition, the homotopy category of spectra is the category of spectra or you invert the stable equivalences. It's not bad. You might take set theoretic issue with this kind of thing. We talked about this last time. If you have these kinds of qualms, one thing you can do is you can, like in the category, when we, when we did, took the homotopy category of, of spaces, we got over our set theoretic issues by approximating our spaces up to weak homotopy equivalents with CW complexes, where we could then perform this localization by modding out by the homotopy relation. A similar procedure can be done here using the following fact. Every spectrum is stably equivalent, meaning that there is a zigzag of stable equivalences, potentially. I mean, in this case, it can be done with one, one direction each, it turns out. I would say every spectrum is stably equivalent to a CW spectrum. No, stably in general, by stably equivalent, I mean there is a zigzag of arbitrary length this between the two. You mean this time. Yeah, yeah, but you said this, you said this time you, you only need one in each direction. So you it happens to be the case that I could accomplish each one of these with one zig or one zag. I see. But that doesn't actually come into this. Like it's 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 it, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> stably equivalent to either. CW spectrum or an omega spectrum, or both, or, or, or a CW omega spectrum. So, what do I mean by CW omega spectrum? I guess I mean a CW spectrum where the adjoint maps are weak homotopy equivalences. Okay.
So you can, without loss of generality, I always assume your spectra are CW spectra or omega spectra or both, depending on what suits you. Okay. All right. Um, now I want to I uh, I want to mention a little fact, a nice fact. Um, so, so yes, but it's not as helpful. So, uh, so if you if you look at Adams's lectures on generalized cohomology, he'll define a homotopy. He'll define a homotopy between maps. It, well, it would just be it would just be like a homotopy, uh, you know, on the F fives, you know, like a, like a family of maps of spectra parameterized by a T. It's, it's exactly what you think it is. However, that's not the right thing to mod out by because the right thing to do is only consider equivalence classes of maps where you only eventually have the maps. And so, and so, you know, and so, and so, and so really you have to deal with only homotopies between equivalence classes of maps. Mm -hmm. And then that's the right thing to do. Ah, it can be, it, okay, so I'll repeat the question. So Frank is asking if you can, if you can model the homotopy category in such a manner that you only need a single zig and a single zag. Um, and uh, the, I mean, if, if by that you mean the morphisms in the homotopy category are things like this, so here's your single zig, zig, here's your single zag, together with an additional map in the middle. So this is it, so every, every map in the stable homotopy category, I believe, can be made into this form. So you need, so here's the map, here's an equivalence going the op, and these are two equivalences going in the opposite direction. Yeah, zig, zag, zig. <laughs> Such a structure is, it is, called, is, is called by, I believe, Dwyer and Kahn, a three-arrow calculus, that you can write everything down in this way. And such homotopical theories have nice properties. No. Oh, uh, what, what was the nice fact? Oh. I remember the nice fact. Okay, that's also a nice fact. But no, I remember the nice fact. It was this. That if if E is an omega spectrum, so if E is an omega spectrum, then I uh, then the uh, then then the maps from pi n plus i of of E i to pi n plus i plus one of E i plus one are actually just isomorphisms because these maps are induced from the map from EI to loops on EI plus 1 and pi n plus 1 plus i plus 1 of a loop space is pi n plus i of the original space. So, uh, so, then, so then this is a co-limit of isomorphisms and hence the co-limit doesn't need, even need to be taken. So this implies that pi n of, of E is the same thing as pi it's isomorphic to pi n plus i, uh, I of e i for every i for which this symbol makes sense. So that's a nice thing about omega spectra is you don't need all the spaces of the spectrum to figure out what the homotopy groups of the spectrum are. Okay. Now, um, I want to talk about two functors. So I have the homotopy category of point topological spaces, and I have the homotopy category of spectra. And uh, oh, let me just introduce a bit of notation here. If I have a spectrum E, maybe I'll refer to a CW spectrum that approximates it as E twiddle, and an omega spectrum that approximates it as omega E. Okay. So then, um, 
the, then there are a pair of adjoint functors. So the left adjoint is sigma infinity, and the right adjoint is called loops infinity. And the uh, sigma infinity is the functor we already talked about. You know, we said that if you, if you invert suspension, then a space should give rise to a spectrum. Okay? And so, the, uh, so sigma infinity is really just that functor. Um, but let me define it formally. So what you do is sigma infinity is defined if you have a space then what you do is you form the suspension spectrum. Uh, so you should take the space and replace it with the CW complex. Our sig sig sigma infinity of k is the uh, spectrum which is obtained by taking the sequence of spaces. Say the ith space of the spectrum should be taken to be sigma i of a CW approximation of k. And then the maps would be maps from the suspension of 1 to the next. We already talked about this. If you take sigma of sigma i, it is sigma i plus 1. To take the map to be the identity map. OK. And if you have a spectrum, E, then what you do is you take the zeroth space of the omega spectrum. And that's omega infinity. Okay. Now, why am I doing this business with CW approximation? I want these to be homotopy invariant functors. This one might have been almost superfluous. I can't remember. But this one is really meaningful because, uh, because here, you, you know, normally, you know, if you have two equivalent spectra here, they're supposed to have the same homotopy groups. But just because you have the same homotopy groups, their zero spaces could be wildly different because the homotopy groups are only eventually defined. And so you need to be an omega spectrum so that the homotopy groups are properly reflected in the zero space. OK. Great. Um, what does the underline mean in the notation there? W? I think I've sometimes been, when I talk about the spaces of the spectrum, I've put an underline there. But, but it does, and sometimes I haven't. I apologize for that. I, I sometimes like to put an underline because I find it confusing. When you have a spectrum, you can talk about the, the ith space of the spectrum, but you could also talk about, well, soon I'm going to define the ith homology theory defined by the spectrum. And I don't like that symbol having two different meanings. So I underline one and don't underline the other. For some reason, I like to underline spaces. I don't know why, to indicate their spaces. OK. Um, right, and that's my next point. So, um, so we already talked about cohomology. So, so cohomology. We already said that if k is a space, then I could define the the e nth cohomology of k to simply be uh, to simply be the uh, to simply be the, uh, the, the homotopy classes of maps from, uh, from k into uh, the pointed homotopy classes of maps into the i space of the omega spectrum. OK? Oh, sorry, nth space. nth space of the omega spectrum. However, I also want to emphasize that, um, that it turns out that this can also, this, so this is an elaboration of this adjunction over here. Um, this can also be uh, taken to be the homotopy classes of maps from the suspension spectrum of K into the end suspension of the spectrum E itself. OK? So now I'm going to define homology. Again, I only need to define reduced homology because I can get all the, all the unreduced and the relative from the reduced. Uh, so um, homology is defined as follows. I guess I should probably, probably in all this, I'd really, I should really assume k is a CW complex or something. But I think these symbols don't care about whether it is. So I think I'm actually technically OK. Um, but, uh, but anyway, the homology. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to define the homology to be the colimit e, e n of k is the colimit of uh, n plus, or the colimit over i 
of uh, pi n plus i of e i smash with uh, k. Okay, and this is a very strange definition. I will say that um, it turns out that if E equals HA, the eilenberg maclean spectrum associated to an abelian group A, then, then EN, EN of K turns out to be HN of X with coefficients in A. Though normally we may be sort of not used to defining homology by taking a co-limit of homotopy groups where you smash with eilenberg maclean spaces. That's really weird. But it turns out that it works. Hmm? Hn of k, thank you. I'm doing this deliberately because I want to now reserve x's and y's to be spectra, and so I want my k to be a, a pointed space so we can sort of distinguish between our spaces and our spectra. OK, now I can. Uh, now what I can do, oh, and let me make one little remark. So, um, so it turns out, so the, the, unreduced, the unreduced homology of a point is the same thing as the reduced homology of a point with a disjoint base point, which is otherwise known as the reduced homology of a sphere. OK? And Comparing with this definition here, smashing with a sphere does nothing. And so those are the homotopy groups of the spectrum. So this is otherwise known as pi n of the spectrum E. So the homotopy groups of the spectrum tell you what the E n homology of a point is. Okay? Just remember with the eilenberg maclean axioms, the dimension axiom says the homology of a point determines a homology theory if it's concentrated in one degree. These are typically not concentrated in one degree, but they still are telling you important information about the homology theory. And another thing to note is that the E n cohomology of a point, this is the same thing as the reduced E n cohomology of the sphere, which is uh, 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 this ends up being homotopy classes of maps from the sphere into sigma n e which is the same thing as s minus n going into E by desuspending both sides. Remember, suspension is an isomorphism. And so this is pi minus n of E. So the En homology of a point is the negative En cohomology of a point. OK, um, at this point, I should probably give you some other examples of homology and cohomology theories so that, we can, so, so, that, so that this can justify the existence of these things more fully. So let me do that here. So let's do some examples that are not regular homology and cohomology. So other prominent examples, uh, K-theory. So uh, you can, uh, let me just say that the K-theory, say that X is a finite CW complex, then the K-theory of X is the Grotendieck group of uh, complex vector bundles on X. So you could take that to be the free abelian group generated by the isomorphism classes of complex vector bundles on X. And then you mod out by the uh, equivalence relation that V Whitney sum W is the same thing as the sum up here. OK. So that turns out to define a cohomology theory, except it doesn't have a dimension axiom or a, it doesn't have a, uh, a suspension ax, it doesn't have a suspension isomorphism because it's only defined in one degree. Well, 
I can still make sense of reduced k-theory. So this will just be, um, so I just want to remind you that a, uh, uh, a, well, I'll just define it this way. It's the kernel of, uh, it's defined to be the kernel. So first off, how is this a contravariant functor? If you have a map between spaces, you can pull back vector bundles. So it goes, the map goes on K theory, goes the opposite way. And, uh, and so then you can always, if X is a pointed space, then the base point maps in. And so you can go out like this. What's the k-theory of a point? Well, vector bundles over a point are just uh, um, cn for some, for some n. And uh, then I'm taking the Grotendieck group. So I'd have a natural numbers worth of isomorphism classes. And I'm taking the group completion of that. So I'd have the integers. So this is like taking a vector bundle and then a virtual bundle and then assigning to it the dimension, the virtual dimension of the vector bundle restricted to the base point. And so the, the reduced K theory is all those vector bund all those virtual bundles over X that have virtual dimension zero over the base point. So that's, that's, uh, that gives you the reduced theory. And then I could simply define the, uh, well, I could define the, the negative k groups of x by saying I want a suspension isomorphism. So I could define these to be k naught of sigma i x. But that doesn't tell me what the positive k groups are. Okay, so so this is something you can do, but um, but to get positive k groups you have to do something else. So to get positive k groups. What we have to do is we have to think about what represents the k functor. So a vector bundle is represented by a map from k into bun, complex vector bundle, of rank n. Um, but then I want to equate bundles uh, if you, you know, you want to, you want to, uh, you want to equate bundles if you like add, if you two bundles, if you add a bunch of trivial bundles to them, they become the same. You want to equate them. So you want to equate these with things going into BUN plus 1. But this kind of only really makes sense if you're talking about bundles of virtual dimension 0. Otherwise, you'd also be comparing their dimensions. So at the end of the day, you find that, that K naught of x is isomorphic to homotopy classes from x into BU cross Z. So this is a pair of maps. The map from x into bu defines a stable vector bundle. And then the map into z is defining, is giving you a different integer for every path component of x. And, and those different integers are telling you what the virtual dimension of that stable vector bundle is over those various path components. So this tells us what the zeroest space of our spectrum should be. Now, when I'm getting at these negative k groups, if I take loops of bu cross z, as I discussed before, loops cares nothing for pi 0. You just have to take the component containing the base point. So loops of bu cross z is the same of loops of bu. And as we just said, loops of b of a group should be, uh, should be the group itself. So it'll be the infinite unitary group. But then comes the crazy theorem of Bott. Bott's famous periodicity theorem says that the loops of u is equivalent to bu cross z, which is truly weird. So then if you consider applying loops repeatedly to bu cross z, it alternates between u and bu cross z with twofold periodicity. This means that I can define an omega spectrum by taking the zeroest space. So what does this, what does this mean? You know, this means A that, uh, well, I'll just say it this way. I can define an omega spectrum where the zeroest space is BU cross Z, the first space is U, the second space is BU cross Z, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this will be the spectrum that defines 
K theory and uh, hence defines the positive K groups. Really, another way of me saying this is I'm saying if you define these negative K groups, it turns out that, that all the even negative K groups are isomorphic and all the odd negative K groups are isomorphic, so why don't we just define the positive ones likewise? Okay, so that's an example. Another example. Fordism. So we'll consider a homology theory, uh, Fordism. So the nth Fordism of a space X is defined, well, what I do is I consider all maps from n manifolds into x. So here is a smooth uh, closed n manifold into x. And, uh, and then I mod out by an equivalence relation, which is boredism. So, uh, so a boardism is going to be if I have two such maps, uh, say M and N, mapping in, uh, say, F disjoint union G, a boardism is going to be a manifold with boundary. So this is the inclusion of the boundary into W, and I need a map over here that makes this diagram commute. Okay. So those are the boardism groups. And then uh, famous construction of Pontryagin and Tom. allows me to realize these as the homology uh, with respect to a certain spectrum. So what we do is we take the n manifold m and we embed it in some r n plus k, some large dimensional Euclidean space. And uh, then what I can do if I have such an embedding, there's a normal bundle to the embedding. And so then that allows me to uh, classify the normal bundle. So that gives me a map into B O N. However, I also have floating around this map from M B O K. Thank you. I also have this map into uh, this map floating around into X. So what I can do is I can consider the Tom complex of uh, of M uh, with respect to the normal bundle, and that's going to map to the Tom complex of B O K with respect to the universal, the universal bundle. So I get an induced map of Tom complexes. But I also have this map into X. So I use, I use the, the, the classifying map from nu to get from here into here, but then I get from here into here using the map F. So that pair of maps gives me a map into here. And then what I can do is I can consider the manifold the embedded manifold, use the tubular neighborhood theorem to identify a tubular neighborhood of the manifold with the normal bundle of the embedding. And the Tom complex is what you get when you collapse everything outside of the tubular neighborhood to a point. So I can take Rn plus K um, and I can collapse everything to a point and get to this Tom complex. Or I could take the one-point compactification of Rn plus k and send that point at infinity also there and get a map from here. And so this is Sn plus k. And we will define this to be Mok. We'll call that space Mok.
So the map BOK maps to BOK plus 1 uh, by means of classifying the universal bundle plus a trivial bundle. And, uh, and so then I get an induced map on Tom complexes. However, with the trivial bundle here, this is nothing but the suspension of MOK. And this is MOK plus 1. And so I get a spectrum. And the theorem, so, so this here is an element of time n plus k of m o k smash x plus, and uh, and so and so I could choose like a bigger embedding and that would make the k bigger, but that would just put me into a different space of the spectrum. But that gives me an element of pi n plus or pi n of m o smash x plus. In other words, that gives me an element of the M O nth homology of X. And the theorem, uh, I guess in framed case, this is Pontryagin. In the unoriented case, this is Tom, is that, uh, is that this is an isomorphism. In particular, I, this gives a nice way of approaching Tom's work on unoriented boardism. The nth boardism group, which is otherwise known as the nth boardism group of a point, is the nth homotopy group of the, of the boardism spectrum. And Tom realized that these are computable. Of course, he didn't have the language of spectra, but he instead was dealing with these co-limits. All right, I am almost out of time, so let me end with one last chart. So uh, if you have a if you have two, sp so let me let me let me write down some things, okay? So here we have spaces. Uh, let me just do this. So, so if you have, uh, so these are some constructions that you can do in the derived category of abelian groups, and here's some constructions you can do in the homotopy category. So in the derived category of abelian groups, you of course have, so you have tensor product, and you have arhom. So you can take homs between chain complexes that we discussed. You can tensor two chain complexes and get a chain complex. So the R is supposed to indicate the right derived functor of hom. And probably I should put an L over here to indicate the left derived tensor product, because I want something defined on the derived category of Z. And it turns out that the, that, that the homotopy category of spectra has a symmetric monoidal structure um, smash product that I haven't had time to talk about. And the smash product is, well, we know what a smash product of spaces is, and it's more, much more non-trivial to define the smash product of spectra. Actually. It's not hard to define this on the level of the homotopy category. It's just hard to see that it has you know, any of the good properties you might want it to have. Um, and similarly, there is a function spectrum. So given two spectra, there is a spectrum of maps between them. It's analogous to the space of maps between two spaces, say. Um, the symmetric monoidal structure here has a unit, which is z. And here, the unit for the symmetric monoidal structure is the sphere spectrum, which is the suspension spectrum of S0. I guess what I'm trying to pitch to you is that the homotopy category of spectra is the derived category of the sphere spectrum. 
Uh, so in the derived category, you have these shift functors. So you can shift by plus or minus some number. And over here, you have suspension and loops. And these are inverse to one another. Just like the shifts are inverse to one another. And then in the derived category, you have triangles. And uh, in the homotopy category of spectra, you have cofiber sequences and fiber sequences. And they turn out to be the same, which is really weird. That's one thing about the category of spectra that's very different than the category of spaces. Um, and this is probably a good place for me to stop. So on the right-hand side, that's like, so when you replace things with a projective resolution, that's, so first off, you don't replace arbitrary things with a projective resolution. You replace very special things, things that are constant, a chain complex concentrated in one degree with a chain complex that is not concentrated in one degree. Okay? Um, so the analogous thing in spectra would be to replace a spectrum with a CW spectrum or maybe replace it with an omega spectrum. That would be like the analog of projective and injective resolution. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you told us about a map from the left to the right, and I'm just wondering if you could uh, elaborate on uh, so, what is missing. So, um, so like, uh, what makes this not an equivalence? Yeah. Okay, so it is neither, you know, it is it is neither full, nor faithful, nor essentially surjective on objects. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say a little more, okay? So, so if you put a field of characteristic zero in the middle, um, can be appropriately localized by some calculation. If I put Q over here and rationalize the homotopy category spectra, I get an equivalence. Yes, that's true. Um, in general, the derived category of Z is the homotopy category of HZ modules, which then maps to the category of spectra by means of forgetting the HZ module structure. So there are maps of, so being a map of HZ, there are more maps, I mean, I mean, more. I mean, you know, there are different maps of spectra than maps of HZ modules. Okay? Let me just say that. Like you could have, you know, you could you could have a map of, of spectra that didn't preserve the HZ mod a map between HZ modules that didn't preserve the HZ module structure, right? So uh, uh, so that would be like a map in here that didn't come from here. And like not every object in here is necessarily a module, even admits a module structure over HZ. Okay? category is suitable, the, the, uh, the morphism that you get are a Z and a Z. Yes. Is there, is there some prop, convenient subcategory of the homotopy category of spectrum where you can do that? Um, yes. I believe the category of CW spectra if you take the category of CW spectra, then you can do it with a zig and a zag. Uh, C, sorry, CW omega spectra. I believe, yeah. Because you need, you need the one zag because you need to account for adding additional cells along the way. But that's all you need. 
Any other questions? Okay, so it's the go-to unit. Thank you.